This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Safety and security online are critically important, and you can protect yourself online with Surfshark. Get 83% off and three months for free through the link in the description below. Saudi Arabia has garnered an overwhelmingly negative reputation from the Western world in recent years, and for pretty good reasons. Women's rights sharply restricted, freedom of the press is unheard of, laborers are forced to conditions just shy of slavery, and state-sponsored discrimination runs rampant. But if you know anything about the country's leader Mohammed bin Salman and the Saudi regime as a whole, you probably know that they aren't the biggest fans of how they are portrayed by global democracies. And indeed, while the most fundamental and totalitarian parts of the regime have remained basically unchanged, a number of lesser reforms have been aimed at changing Saudi's portrayal on the world stage. Women's rights have been slightly expanded, the religious police have begun to have their powers restricted, and foreign visas have have started to allow a greater tourist population into the country. At the heart of Bin Salman's reform is the Saudi Vision 2030, a massive strategic proposal designed with three main objectives – boost the Saudi economy, reinforce and culturally enrich Saudi society, and change the Saudi government's structure toward greater automation and efficiency and away from pure oil dependency. Saudi Vision 2030 has a vast number of proposed initiatives, developments, and reforms, but its crown jewel is the subject of today's video. This is Neom, short for Neom Mu Stockball, meaning new future. It is a planned city that is assigned for construction in Saudi Arabia's northern Tabuk region bordering on the Red Sea. With a staggering price tag, and wait for this one, 500 billion dollars US, Neom is expected to sprawl across well over 10,000 square miles, 26 and a half thousand square kilometers. That's 42 times the area of Tokyo, 33 times that of New York City, 27 times that of Abu Dhabi, and 17 times London, depending on how you prefer to compare sizes. Built as truly a smart city, Neom is expected to take Saudi Arabia to the next level of technology, innovation, and economic success. And if the regime has their way, that's gonna just be the very beginning. Neom was first proposed in 2017, just four months after Mohammed bin Salman was appointed as crown prince. And from the start, the bigger intentions behind the project were clear. Bin Salman was a controversial choice for acting ruler from the start, and by rallying his nation immediately behind a vast industrial and socio-economic initiative, he could take a fair amount of heat away from other more serious questions about his background, abilities, and intentions. From a domestic standpoint, rallying a young population with high unemployment raids and a faltering single export economy behind this kind of project was a perfect way to consolidate power, drive employment, and unite Saudi Arabia around a vision of the future in which bin Salman would ostensibly still be in charge. From an international perspective, Neom was a way to rehabilitate Saudi Arabia's fundamentalist authoritarian image on the world stage, which was especially important as global oil consumers began to look at producers other than Saudi. Just as important was the potential for Neom to appeal to global investors across many areas of interest as the crown prince attempted to build a society from the ground up. Neom was unveiled at the Future Investment Initiative Conference in Riddar, where Bin Salman himself pitched the idea alongside domestic and foreign partners. Even at the start, the proposal itself was more than a little outlandish. Concept art showed flying cars and robots performing household tasks in addition to security and caregiving. Artificial intelligence would manage all sorts of functions of daily life, and an artificial moon – that's right, really, an artificial moon – would rest in the sky above. Bin Salman waxed poetic on stage about the project's potential. This is a place not for conventional people or conventional companies. This will be a place for the dreamers of the world. The strong political will and the desire of a nation. All the success factors are there to create something big in Saudi Arabia. The city's webpage, now neom.com, described it as such. Neom is positioned to become an aspirational society that heralds the future of human civilization by offering its inhabitants an idyllic lifestyle set against a backdrop of a community founded on modern architecture, lush green spaces, quality of life, safety, and technology and service of humanity paired with excellent economic opportunities. By October of 2017, ads for Neom were already playing on televisions as far away as America. However, there were parts of the proposal 
proposal that were decidedly less idealistic, although just as aspirational. Among early goals were that Neon would be powered solely by wind and solar energy, a goal that is far easier to reach in Saudi Arabia than it is in most places. Additionally, the development outlines indicated that Neon would have its own autonomous judicial system, which could conceivably be in lockstep with the existing, repressive, cleric-driven Saudi system, but that also might not be. Residents within Neom's boundaries would be subject to distinct new tax and labor laws, although these have yet to be clearly defined. And finally, Neom called for one thing above all else, land development, intercities, industrial areas, and more, beginning with the line. The line is the first tangible development initiative that has started construction within the Neom region. At a proposed length of 170 kilometers or just over 100 miles, the line is a linear city subdivided into numerous hyperconnected smaller communities stretching from the Red Sea to the northeastern region of the country. Plans for the line state that there will be no cars in this development, no roads, and over a million people. The line will be interconnected by an underground transportation system, but on the surface, the city is meant to be connected to nature. Every function of daily life, education, medicine, recreation, work are apparently going to be within five walking minutes of each other. That is, of course, if the project's architects and planners can make it work. The line uses a nodal design, which views each section or point within the city as a self-contained unit. Each unit has schools, grocery stores, clinics, and everything else needed to attend to a society within that section, ensuring that a resident of the section only rarely needs to journey out elsewhere for reasons other than recreation. Below ground, two additional levels will help to balance out the needs of the line's residents, with one level focused on infrastructure and the other on transport. The transportation level calls for, among other things, a high-speed train that moves faster than any rail line in use today, capable of taking residents from one end of the line to the other in just 20 minutes at speeds of 512 kilometers per hour. That's over 300 miles per hour. Watching over it all is an AI that will use predictive data modeling to generate new solutions to existing problems within the line and proactively improve life in other ways. The line is central to a number of collectives that Ben Salman and his advisors hope to meet with Neom. The development is supposed to begin welcoming Residents in 2025 with the goal of hosting nearly 400,000 jobs and contributing nearly $50 billion in annual GDP by 2030. The megacity is planned to be a free trade zone where the nebulous new tax and governance structures for Neom will first be put into effect. As part of this early phase of the project, US company Oracle has announced that it will be the first tenant in the line's massive data center, spreading fast, stable internet connectivity across the area. In addition, a joint project with Saudi's King Abdullah University of Science and Technology will establish a coral garden expected to be the world's largest across 100 hectares on a Red Sea island off the coast of the line. Now, we'll get back to today's video in just a moment, but first, here's a quick word from today's sponsor, Surfshark. Do you use the internet? I'm guessing the answer might be yes. And unfortunately, the internet can be a weird place. There are people out there who want to ruin your day. They want to take your details, steal your valuable identity. Fortunately, Surfshark has Hacklock that searches databases for your password, which sounds bad, but it's not. They're the good guys. If your data has been leaked, they will let you know so you stay safe. Also, if you've got to the end of your Netflix, you're like, whoa. I'm done. There's nothing else to watch, or maybe just nothing of interest. Well, fire up Surfshark VPN, jump over to another country, and you'll find that your Netflix selection will be markedly different. I do that allegedly often over to the US, but also there are options in Europe that you don't have in the US. I found that out for the, uh, the Mission Impossible movies only available in Europe, at least a couple of weeks ago. Surfshark is also totally unlimited, so you can download 4K, stream however you want, no worries. Also great support, no logs, and a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it. Right now, you guys can get 83% off and three months for free through the link below, or just use my code, MEGA. And now let's get back to today's video. In November of 2021, Bill Salman announced the next step in bringing his Neom vision to life. Oxagon, a gargantuan eight-sided industrial complex partially housed on land and partially floating on the Red Sea. Situated nearby to the Suez Canal and within easy accessible distance of the line, Oxagon will incorporate a current port, Duba, into a much larger development. Oxagon is meant to serve as a supply hub servicing the rest of Neom with a fully integrated distribution system operating at net zero emissions levels. A promotional video claimed that the Oxagon would be the world's largest floating structure with an entirely 
automated port and marine research center. At Oxagon's organizational core are seven sectors of industry where its energy will be focused. Autonomous mobility, water innovation, sustainable food production, health and wellness, digital manufacturing, sustainable energy, and modern construction. Like the line, Oxygen is expected to be mostly walkable and otherwise accessible via hydrogen-powered transport. The industrial zone will integrate advanced concepts in technology from machine learning and robotics to the Internet of Things. Also central to the Oxygen plan, a portion of the complex will be dedicated to innovation and education with the goal to place Oxygen and thus Neom and Saudi Arabia on the same level as the biggest innovation hubs around the world. As design goals for Neom have become clearer, so is the list of goals and plans for later in the development process. Neom is managed as a living laboratory, not just cities and outlying towns, but new air and seaports, enterprise and industrial zones, research centers, sports, entertainment, and tourist attractions. Oxygon and the line are just the first planned developments of their kind within Neom, but by no means are the only ones. And with a truly vast region to fill, there is still plenty of additional potential for new developments and ideas. Current word is that new may even allow alcohol, a landmark shift in Saudi thinking, given that the substance is very, very illegal in the rest of the Wahhabi nation. Goals towards sustainable energy have become more precise, with green hydrogen added to Neom's prioritization of wind and solar. U.S. company Air Products and Chemicals have been contracted to build a green hydrogen plant there, the largest in the world, at a price of about $5 billion. With a more diversified set of energy sources, Neom can hit its goal of fully sustainable power more easily, and since Saudi Arabia is one of the few regions in the world where green hydrogen can be produced, the plant may become an evidence-based advertisement to other nations, with Neom used to illustrate the potential of this energy source. In addition, Neom plans to become host to an advanced water desalination and distribution infrastructure, relying on what developers call an Internet of Water to guide delivery, recycling, and monitoring of the system. The plans for advanced tech at Neom have only continued to expand. In December 2021, Neom announced joint plans with Volocopter, a company working to design air taxis to essentially design and create an air taxi system for use across the area. Ideally, the program will have 15 air aircraft in the sky by 2024 with more to come. On top of this, British software company Arquid Quantum has joined up with Neom to build a quantum cybersecurity system with the goal of defending AI-run cities against extremely sophisticated cyber attacks. Of course, Neom wouldn't be Neom without some other more outlandish goals, because Apparently, we didn't get ridiculously outlandish enough already. And there are plenty of those floating around. The giant artificial glowing moon we mentioned earlier is still part of the plan, plus a vast and continuous cloud seeding effort to create rainfall in the area, but on a much more massive scale and in a harsher environment than has ever been achieved before anywhere on Earth. Developers have teased a Jurassic Park-style theme park with massive robot dinosaurs, plus a form of entertainment in which robots fight each other using martial arts techniques. Okay then. In 2019, Mohammed bin Salman announced that he apparently wanted the sand on Neom's beaches to glow in the dark, although there doesn't seem to be much of a plan on how exactly he's going to make that happen. Neom paints an incredibly rosy version of the planet, but what about the present? Unfortunately, it appears to have been too much to ask that the construction of a sustainable, equitable utopia will be sustainable, or equitable, or utopic. Where the Saudi government advertises an omnipresent, omniscient AI working to keep the appetites of Neom citizens satisfied, there is uh, an opposite argument to be made. So-called cognitive cities like Neom rely on data collection on a nearly incomprehensible scale. For an AI like this to fulfill its tasks, it doesn't just need to know what society does, but what you do, not just in your public life, but in your private one as well. Similarly, AI-integrated ports, industrial zones, innovation sectors, and research hubs must keep tabs on every quiet revelation and trade secret, all funneled back to the AI's owner, Saudi Arabia, and Bin Salman himself. What is conceived and marketed as a technophile's dream quickly becomes not just an economic powerhouse for the Saudis, but an extremely bright, innovative population with all the elements of one's personal and public life brought forth for the Saudis to see. And given Saudi Arabia's authoritarian style of governance, well, let's just say I to know how comfortable I'd be with all of that. And beyond the specter of future social control, there's a great deal of repression happening around Neom even today. If you look back to the 26,500 kilometers Neom is planned to inhabit, ask yourself 
was nobody else already there? In truth, the region had been home to thousands of tribal Hawatat people before Bin Salman set his sights on it, and in the face of the Saudi economic machine, they've been powerless to resist the destruction of their homeland. One tribesman who attempted to protest the Saudi government's actions was shot by security forces, and his people have been evicted from the territory. The area targeted for Yom has been repeatedly described as virgin land, untouched by human hand and foot, but that simply isn't the case. 20,000 Hawatat have either been evicted or are going to be, with no word on where they might be allowed to go afterward. As you might imagine, the Neom PR team has been silent when they've been asked about this. Finally, there's the simple fact that mega projects like this have been attempted in Saudi before and they haven't worked. $10 billion was poured into the King Abdullah Financial District in Riyadh, which has stagnated and gone unfinished for over 15 years of development. Similarly, the King Abdullah Economic City was conceived in 2006 and was supposed to have 4.5 million inhabitants by 2020, but it has roughly 4,000 today. And the Jeddah Tower, once expected to become the tallest building in the world, has been on hold since 2018. The nation's cities and towns have been largely disrepair, and many Saudis feel justifiably that the half trillion dollars being thrown at Neom could be better spent elsewhere. Neom is complicated, to say the very least. Staggeringly ambitious in conception and often sparse on details, it cannot help but seem like yet another of the failed mega projects that authoritarian governments have long relied on to take focus away from human rights and bit of a bad reputation. Couched in the Saudi government's focus on internal repression, regional competitiveness, and persistent desire to woo the Western world, Neom today looks more like a PR prop than anything else. With few outside observers ever able to directly witness what may or may not be going on in that vast landscape, there's little evidence that the line, Oxagon, or any of Neom's other high-minded fantasies will become reality anytime soon or ever. But at the same time, it's difficult to look away from the indicators that something may be coming out of the coast of the Red Sea. From high-profile Western companies signing up and pitching in, to a surprisingly consistent marketing campaign, to a list of design concepts that appears only to be ramping up in scale, Neom actually has something resembling potential, far-fetched as glowing sand, robotic maids, and artificial moons might be. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo even made a visit to Neom in late 2020, indicating that the megacity remains central to Saudi's foreign policy. From Mohammed bin Salman's grandiose technophilic fever dreams, a real cityscape could still conceivably emerge, and as long as that hope exists, there are those among us who will feel naturally entranced by what it might become. Any viewer of this channel knows the wonder that comes from a mega project finally seeming as if it might be realized, and for better or worse, Neom continues to carry that spark, at least for now.